intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Welcome back, Star Trek fans, and I've got a new ship, and I'm really excited about it. It's the Enterprise A. Now, this is the one from the Kelvin timeline, although there are a couple of skins you can get to change its looks, but this is the level 50 epic, so it's a G4 epic here in STFC, and Firstly, I've always loved the look of this ship, hence me pretty excited to get it, even though I'm getting it after I've already passed level 50 on the main account. Doesn't mean that I wouldn't have got it before, I just was in love with the Tribune. But we're going to talk about this ship, the pros, the cons, what we're using it for, what we can do with it, how we load it out, what it costs, and all of the above. And I've got it running here in Armada in the background as we're going to discuss cost of this beautiful ship. So what I'm going to do first is throw on the screen the overall cost of the Enterprise A leveling up. And I'm going to utilize the opportunity to kind of speak to the tier five, tier seven, tier nine method that I speak to a lot, but I want to describe that. So if you watch this video, you know what I mean going forward. So when I talk about recommending where a ship goes, keep in mind that the five, seven, nine method is meant for free to play or very light spenders. And the idea behind it is several different things. Tier five is simply meant to say, hey, this is enough to get your dailies done give you a couple of below deck slots for officers, etc., which is probably not going to be powerful enough to say have the warp range for big armadas, which you can always get around that by using a disco or a Gorn Eviscerator. It's not going to be PVP viable. You can use it, but it's probably not going to be that strong as y'all have seen with my Vorcha, which is tier five in arenas. Some matches are pretty good, but definitely not having the DPR and whole health to have long lasting fights against the bigger targets. And then last but not least, that tier nine is meant to give you that PVP element. More below deck slots, more overall power without getting too deep into the epics. But keep in mind, in G4 and G5, the biggest bottleneck for these ships is going to be rare parts. And that's how it is for a lot of players experience that now. <laughs> As you're deciding how to go about that, keep those overall prices in mind. Now, it does have a unique ship ability, as all ships do, but it is quite weak. In fact, as long as the U.S. Enterprise A has morale, every time it gets hit, increasing the weapons damage by 1%. Now, there is a escalator here, obviously, so that is not the strongest version, but the problem is even the strongest version is just not very strong. So, that isn't to say that it isn't worth upgrading. It's just simply how it gets its power comes in a different way. So, for those that don't know, the Enterprise A and the Hectile, when G4 first rolled out, were simply deemed extremely underwhelming and underpowered. So what Scopely ended up doing is giving them all a raw stats increase because the Tribune special ability is so good that instead of just simply making their special abilities better, what they did is give them a huge bump up in numbers. So that can actually be seen a little bit if you go into your ship preview menu where you're going to notice, hey, why does the Enterprise A just look so strong if you're just talking about sorting my shipyard level and comparing side by side now obviously these numbers will vary based on the research you have actually done so if you've done more interceptor research you're probably going to have a little bit stronger ship. but if we scroll over here you're gonna see my tribune only shows a building at 62 million to come out with but the enterprise a and the hectare are bigger even though i actually have more battleship research than i do explore now again that varies based on where you're at as a player etc but if you can see for example over here with these, the 46 is how they're much closer to being even. Like they're right there with each other. Yet over here, huge disparity. So that is why you're going to see a bigger number for the Enterprise A. Weak ship ability, but overall has gotten pretty high in terms of the boosted stats. That can be a pretty big deal for you if you're a player looking to get into ship at 50. Now, I always recommend getting a 50 ship. I don't like skipping any. I think if you go to level 34, 42, 46, 50, etc., you should get at least one of the ships, but maybe not all of them. And how to acquire them? Well, a couple different ways. The obvious way is going to be in your faction store. Now, the biggest thing about these ships that people are going to comment on is they are 1 million faction credits. Now, at the time of making this video in 2024, that's not as big of an issue as it was in years past with a lot more ways to get faction credits. But you can even use things like Latinum, which again is something that more and more players are having access to. For those that don't know, I figured I would leave it in this video. If you do not have faction credits, so you're in a faction credit deficit for something like this turn in, you can still click the button and it gives you the offer to do it in Latinum. It is a 50 to 1 rate, FYI. So 50 Latinum to 1 faction credit. It is not cheap, but it is an option if you're looking to expedite your acquisition 
of these shards because just like with the epic 34s it's not reasonable to go out and grind them so you have to find ways to get them so in the faction store is going to be your primary way you can also do in your alliance store i'm sorry your away team store we'll do the alliance store in a second your away team store has them right here assuming you're at the rep and close enough in level you see is three blueprints for 22,000 or singular for 4450 and then last but certainly not least if you wait until g5 as i did you will notice them starting to come in your alliance chest so the g5 chest you can scroll down and find a slew of really neat things for your g5s but also g4s are going to still have their epics appear when you're looking at various chests as you go through them piece by piece the g5 chests are always things that we talk about being super valuable like hey these are really good and as you pull them you can get good rewards like blueprints and sometimes that means pulling all of these and that can be a way through your armada chest to get more of the ships that you're looking for and just kind of depends on where you're as a player and what you like because i'm an alliance that does enough armadas i can afford to do these pulls and that means that i can get extra ship bps for future ships or current ships based on my level so level 50 level 51 you know maybe i am looking at an enterprise or a tribune i do want to uh back out real quick as uh, i go through and collect these i'll have a have an opportunity to do that a little bit later i might get distracted when i make a video sometimes add is a thing if you have it comment down below so as we take a look at me doing a quick armada simply want to show viability in running these and as you can see this one handles this very easily now granted did have david come by but that's not really an issue the thing with a lot of these ships we've made it to a point where you don't have to go too specific in terms of ship for crewing you can use a standard armada crew with this ship don't need anything really spectacular if anything crews have gotten more general than they were in the past whereas maybe you would have something specific for an enterprise where you want to make sure you have morale but now the optimal strategy in the game is to actually have all three burning hull breach and morale because well the star charts right if you do the star charts research that gives you bonuses for having all of them so it's not really about crewing specific anymore so your standard hostile crews apply your standard pvp crews apply Keep in mind that it would have to be Explorer PvP crews. And then, of course, your Armada crews standard apply. Whatever you would use against a specific hostile, you're going to use the same thing on your Enterprise A that you were using on, say, your Pylum or your Newton or your Coronar. Same ideas are going to apply. The biggest thing is going to be the cost and how that works for you. And with that, I actually want to use this opportunity going over the big cost already. So we talked about the overall cost. I do want to go over individual costs for you as a player. So... Q snap real quick this is an opportunity for me to show you box club for those that haven't used it before i've talked about box club a lot it's one of the player tools that i use the most and definitely say and encourage others to check out now this is the cost calculator i've plugged in the enterprise a and the reason this is important is it gives you these bonuses over here these build bonuses remember when i talk about if you're free to play you want to get those dolomites you can get those free researches in the station tree that help you have more value in terms of your efficiency with ship parts and ore gas crystal well you can see those total bonuses for your own account if you have synced it together with spox club here you can see for me my explorer parts I actually done a little bit more efficiency research is at 775 and then in my gas i'm at 519 i've done a little bit more towards explorers as i prepare for things i'm going at in the future if you don't know what it is well it is an enterprise not the one you see on the screen currently i mean come on i know you you know you and i know you know that i know you so with that you can see my 579 method how much is going to cost and i think that's really important for us to look at as a group so we talked about the raw cost being pretty high with uncommon ship parts 375 but for me that's down to 42.8 in fact where i sit now keep in mind I've, i'm three levels i'm technically three levels in 51 52 53 into g5 but here's how much i have at the moment if i wanted to take this to tier 9 immediately i can because i know the efficiencies that i have and which ones to work on which is why tools like spox club are so good so again the affordability of these has has increased in terms of not that their cost has gone down although technically their cost has gone down with the researches that are now available to players remember we talked about the iss jelly being a g4 ship that you can run as a perpetual farm as in you get more g4 materials for scrapping it than you invested into it check out that video if you haven't already 
And that means that you can actually use that to pay into an Enterprise A, making the Enterprise A an Epic that is cheaper to upgrade in G4 than other G4 Epic ships. It's easier to get the Enterprise A at a high tier for a player out there trying to be efficient and strategize. But if you're wanting a really strong ship at level 50, whether you're on an OpsLock server or you're simply wanting to have a strong ship at 50, using that method that becomes available at level 44, if you're doing your research, again, pay attention to your build bonuses. And that video I will plug at the end of this one, you can find a lot of success. Overall, the main reason that I always unlock these ships is pretty simple. I love them. I love ship collecting. I love Star Trek and I love nostalgia. And I get all of that by looking at these. Shout out to the North Cut in the background. Short answer, is this a good ship? It's a solid ship. The Tribune is, in my opinion, still the best level 50 epic, but that doesn't make this a slouch, because again, like I said, it did get a pretty massive stat boost to make up for the fact that it doesn't have a great ship ability, which means that you can use this to great effect out in the combat world, including PvP, because again, you don't necessarily need the Tribune's ability in PvP. You usually have that be more effective in PvE or Armadas, because fights don't last as long, meaning Ships with good stat boosting can be quite effective. So I like the Enterprise A and I'm very excited to have it. If you have specific questions on how it works or what you want to go after, drop them down in the comment section down below. Happy to help out. Live long and plunder. Stay safe on the Space Cowboys. Deuces, that's me. Catch you on the next Star Trek Fleet Command video. And I'm out. Appreciate every single one of you. Love you. See you on the next one. An even better outro than the intro. For the Empire and glory to your house.